Well, well, well. You look handsome yet again. Yellow tie, gray. It's a wonderful you know, day. Your game is on, buddy. Excuse me, I'm going to eat my bagel. That's good, man. Don't eat other people's bagels. <laughs> Doing well. We're, we're just knocking them out on all cylinders. We're what? We're knocking it out on all cylinders. It seems like things are going the right way. I appreciate that. I've got my coffee. It's not hot, but it's warm. That's okay. We're doing well, sir. And uh, like uh, slow, steady progress, I think we're making. You know, I try to give you and the guys a lot of grief, right? You know, it's part of my joy, right? I try to get a and bunch of stoic, immovable SOBs you are. Yeah. Sorry. It's as steel as joy stealing, is it? <laughs> <laughs> like rocks. It's like yelling at rocks. They're, so there's they're how they train drill instructors for the Marines, right? They have them scream at trees. Just yell at the trees until the tree moves. <laughs> and it's like, that's how they train them so that they, um, they know how to yell at the guys when they train them. It's very interesting. Like, I enjoy talking to the um, people that I meet that are um, in the or have been in the service and how they trained them. Yes, it's interesting because it's a psychological game that has been going on for thousands of years. <clears throat> it's very good. We we did some good work yesterday, and we're going to accomplish some more good work today. Yeah, I thought I because we didn't quite finish. Okay. Yesterday, I, I uh, got up this morning and I I prepared. I must say, this is episode 2046. So do this thing, like, subscribe, notifications, leave the messages just like last time. We enjoy, we enjoy it. All right. Now, what are we going to talk about, Kurt? Well, uh, I wanted to revisit. Um, I did a little table here to talk, the revisit we talked about yesterday, the epistemology. Right. And um, and that's because when we were going through it, I was emphasizing the means of measurement, whether it's, in other words, there's a problem here of you have to know how to claim something is true, right? So, for example, one of the things you hear in philosophy is try to bring up a, the principle of non-contradiction and that an argument has to be provable by its own criteria. Well, that's a fucking stupid statement because <laughs> there, there's no closure. The only appeal, the only appeal to closure was outside of the outside of the argument. In other words, there's always a broader, in other words, until you get to fully testing every dimension that's possible for humans to test, you you haven't got to the point where you can get to closure. And even, I mean, the, 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 there's the information in the system is sufficient to make a judgment. Well, the same thing is true for, you know, mathematically reducible. People say, well, that's a law of nature. It's mathematically reducible. Well, I mean, it it it, it, it may not be mathematically re reducible. So when they say uh, uh, there's a, a a hypothesis theory or law, when they say law, they mean it's mathematically reducible. Oh. I, I, what, what their answer, their the right answer, because they mean they want it to be predictable, right? Statistically predictable. Um. Well, you know, even now at the there's this 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 is where mathematics breaks breaks down at sort of the quantum level, right? right. Uh, but it also breaks down at the social level, the economic level, because human behavior is, uh, you know, it, it's not unlimited. But what can happen within those limits is like language, essentially infinite. Right. Um. So uh, I wanted to just. Put this table up here and see if we can talk through it right and the reason is because 
there's a hole in the table. Oh my. And um, and I want to discuss. In other words, it's one of these. It's just like what we say: serialize, operationalize, or disambiguate by serialization, operationalization, and to a system of measurement. And when you do that, you see holes, and that means making basically put a competition together. Right. And so, can I share my screen? Of course. I don't know if you can read this if I share my screen. We'll see. <clears throat> I can read it. Maximize your screen, fellows, if you have a hard time reading that, because it's little. Why can I make that show? What is the deal here? All right, so I want to just go with there's the before, uh, the during, and the after conditions. Remember that? Yep. Right. So we do have a a sequence. And um, the labels for these uh, things are really idea, hypothesis, theory, uh, a surviving theory, or a settled theory, and a law. And the, the problem is we don't have a word for this other than, you know, surviving is settled right. and then law the problem is is that uh, the way that we define law is mathematically reducible okay and this isn't correct how do you mathematically reduce the law of stable relations or evolution yeah that's a good question you can because when they say mathematics are you relying on a particular set of knowledge for the description of things at human scale? Okay. So the labels we use, um, I'm just going to fill this in, which is um, causality comes by some sort of stimulation. Um, we uh, uh, use, Once we've integrated it, we perform auto-association, which is imagination. And then we uh, sort of uh, come up with one of those things that sounds possible or probable. We come up with a hypothesis. We, uh, wait a minute, let me go. It's a test. Okay. Falsify it. Right. Um, we don't, we can't do anything here. We're just, this is, is it coherent? Does it make sense enough? Right. Which is to say the dream means something. Right. And it, it, like I can, I can talk about it. Right. Um, we can produce a theory, right? And we're supposed to falsify that, right? Right. We can, uh, the reason we've, uh, uh, we call it a surviving theory of settles theory is a survival. V-I-V-A-L. Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, so we're we're working through the same process over and over again. Right. And then what we'd like is we'd like to get this to a settled law. And th this is the this so we're we have a missing link in our labels of states of epistemology and we have a false categorization of what constitutes a law why do you say a false categorization uh because we're saying it has to be mathematically reducible oh. now 
it has so that's to be, not it's not sufficient is what you're saying it's insufficient or which is real computation. Okay, so that's different. Computationally reducible. What that means is that, uh, that you can only reduce it to computation. Um, and so the point I want to make here is that there are plenty of theories that aren't mathematically reducible because they, they are merely reducible to their means of calculation. Right. Does that make sense? So um, uh, uh, in this case, that would be, I mean there's there's, for example, logical laws. Are they mathematically reducible? No, they're, they're reducible to the first principles by which the calculation is made. Okay. Does it make sense? I understand. So th this is the problem with our definition of law. We have to understand that there are different categories of problems and that some of those problems are... Um, are only are uh, are associatively reducible. We can explain them, right? We can construct them, and it's mathematically reducible. So the point I'm trying to make here is that the size of the sets of causality. Well, technically, that's infinite. What we can imagine within the universe, given human ability, is very large. Uh, what we can hypothesize is large. What we can reduce to theory is sort of in the middle. What survives is small, but what we can reduce to, to laws is small. But the kind of laws that exist depend on the means of testifying to the, the law itself. So there are laws of logic, or, uh, there are laws of human perception, laws of logic, laws of computational constructability, when you place laws of logical sets, and uh, laws of mathematical reducible. And that's just a, a hierarchy that we've seen elsewhere. So the method of causality that we can sort of get from stimulation is we can't we can't um, perceive something unless we can make it coherent which means commensurable uh, we can't imagine something unless we can predict from a coherence or a system of an episode of perception uh, we can develop a language so basically a set of hypotheses um, with the imprecision of our thoughts, we can use actions to use the universe to falsify our thoughts. We can use markets to um, go, go out and um, uh, falsify our thoughts. And then we can, it, we can hopefully express any surviving thoughts as a law. I feel like I'm not getting you getting you along my journey here. No, I'm getting there. I'm I'm, I'm understanding where you're going. Right. Um, so uh, so I was trying to say that the uh, the we move from coherence to imagination to sets, you know, which is basically the things make sense. Yep. To some equi the equivalent of counting to the counting. equivalent oh, of yeah. simulations, the equivalent of statistics. And so the, the problem is, is that the size of the thing is that this problem is this last two tables, this last two columns. 
is that uh, we don't have we don't we have this these level lovely words for idea hypothesis theory um, and law but we don't have a, a lovely term for a theory that survived market market competition and when we talk about law we're incorrectly constrained to mathematically reducible when we need to when it when it may only be computationally reducible or associatively reducible. Yeah. So, what's the you matter? You say what? associatively reducible. What does that mean to you? It means you can think of it, right? You can think of it, or you can imagine it, right? I mean, it's coherent. Right. Um, uh, and uh, this uh, computationally constructible, computationally reducible. Well, that's something I covered pretty deeply yesterday, which is okay. that the, the operations that can be made uh, are broader than the things that are mathematically reducible because mathematically reducible things are small in number. Very limited. And so um, there's this supply demand curve between what's imaginary and what's mathematically reducible. And the intersection of course is what's operationally possible. Does that make sense? That works. So we're trying to testify to what's operationally uh, possible. Right. And we can only testify to what's observable. Right. Um, et cetera. So does this, do, I, I feel like I did a bad job now. No, it's okay. You did a good job. The, um, it's just, it's the, um, there's a, um, it's an interesting um, reduction of uh, refinement of thought, right? As right. on the left hand side of the chart is the poor, unrefined, coherent thought. And toward the right hand side is the refined, final binding reality. Yeah, the, the thing is, what can you testify to here? Right. Right. You can only testify to one of these things. Like, you can, you know, our thoughts are sort of limited to some sorts of sets or, you know, the, there's some sort of, I mean, I don't want to get it. I, I was going to go, I'd be trying to use an analogy. I don't want to bring another analogy in. Right. But it's uh, account, that's accounting there. Right. It's counting and accounting. And this is simulations, which is markets. Huh. It's interesting that simulations and markets is a very weird thing to say it's right well but what's that's what a simulation is it's a it, it's a competition right right so you, you're you're running it um and so uh, <clears throat> we have like you know for example we have functional programming what does that mean and we have object oriented programming Functional programming is writing functions. You know, go do this, go do that, go do this. Um, you know, this is uh, this tends to be a little bit more like lists. Oh. Okay. Uh, functions uh, and then uh, abstract programming. You write the reason we develop these things is to do simple simple work to do functions. That uh, have that need to be broken into different parts, and we use object-oriented programming to write simulations, hmm. right? And so these are markets. So I'm not trying to bring programming in here, but I'm just trying to show that in every discipline you have the verbal, the uh, conceptual, yeah. The verbal, the physical, and the adversarial. Huh. And the really the surviving. The reducibility. Yeah. So <laughs> does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the existential. It's quite interesting. It's like um, um 
it's reducible, which is, um, I think about markets and I, I think about um, over the counter medications as a market. Okay. Yes. Cause I went in, I went, in, I was, I was ill and I went to the market and I was looking for um, what I presumed would be there and it wasn't. Some very low cost um, generics were, were, which I presumed would be available, were not available. And I was like, why is that? And it's like, it's reducible to zero. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> yes. The issue was it, it my and I like I study I thought about this. It's like there's some novelty in the in the market because the um the the marginal value of bringing the predicted uh generics to the market is insufficient to allow it to continue to exist. So it reduced to zero. The monopoly says, no, we're going to make a, a new novel one and charge more for because we can't make enough money on the on the predictable one that everyone else is, knows about. Which I don't know. I, I, I don't know how that re, re, reduced, reduced to zero, though. The law says it can't exist in the marketplace. Well, so let's continue with this because... Um... What is what is reducibility? Okay. It's parsimony. Okay. Right? And what's parsimony? <laughs> Minimization. Right? Okay. Um, disambiguation. Okay. Let's just leave that off. And and the problem is. Um, so the, the problem, um, uh, this is okay. So for the audience working session, <laughs> there we go. All right. So, uh, what I am, what, uh, what Brad and what, uh, Brad and I are doing is we're working through this problem and Brad, of course, is playing the audience. And so I am trying to say, how do I get this idea across? So the, 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 the basic issue here is that what, how reducible is the phenomena that we're trying to describe? Right. right? So that can't be disambiguated any further than the method that what we're trying to describe can be reduced. So, so some sequence, what we call a protocol, right? Medicine uses protocols, yep. science uses protocols. Yep. It's a sequence of steps. Yes? Yeah. Yep. That are designed to produce an outcome. That's right, operations. And, mo and, and most importantly, to not produce a bad outcome, alternative outcome. <laughs> That's right. In other words, it, it's supposed to be parsimonious, and unambiguous. That's right. right. So how can, is there a way, how else would you reduce that protocol to anything other than the steps in the protocol? Right. You can't. You right. Can now, now, the you, now you, what, you study the protocol as you go and you like eliminate that which is unnecessary <laughs> until there's nothing left to eliminate, right? <laughs> Yes. So necessary and sufficient is the is the terminology. Correct. So the problem is, is a protocol reducible? 
it's reducible to a name. That's right. But you can't reduce the protocol itself. No. No. Correct. I mean, that's, that's the correct. Right. Um, uh, this gets to be really boy. Go oh boy. This could get really fascinatingly complicated. With <laughs> this is the stuff I love, right? So I gotta be a little not nerdy. Um, so this, so the to jump ahead, the problem we face is that uh, the idea of um, the difference between what is, um, let's say, an economics, what is how we would describe an economic law, isn't reducible to a quantitative law. Okay. So in other words, a logical law. A uh, behavioral law, an economic law, and a physical law. These are all reducible only to the means by which the regularity can be described. Right. And a unique instance, a uniqueness, can't be reducible to a general rule. I, um, when you say uniqueness can't be reducible to a general rule, what exactly do you mean? I mean that uh, you're you. <laughs> it's no general rule. <laughs> That's right. So the, the, the patient would say something like, um, on the average, how long does this last? And I said, it doesn't mean anything in the context of this. There's case. no such thing. It doesn't mean anything. It's absolutely without meaning, which is an interesting function, which is it's not reducible to, to that statistical uh, uh, function. Right. And so this is a problem with many statistics. As we're trying to make, unless a statistic can be operationally constructed, in other words, fully disambiguated, it's probably false. So our favorite ones come from economics, like My word. household income. All right. There's been a decline in household income. Well, if you break up the number of households from marriages to individuals, you declare de and you de delay marriage to your thirties. You're gonna oh have my. a total decline in household income. Oh my! <laughs> or another one. Um, my favorite one is uh, is uh, well, you know, people earning over thirty thousand dollars a year. Well, they're poor. I mean, under thirty thousand dollars a year, or they're poor. Well, what fucking people? <laughs> I mean, you mean like when I'm nineteen? Right. I need beer money. I need beer money and gas money. Burger right. beer and gas money. That's right. And maybe to buy a a, a, a box of condoms every month. Right. right. I mean, it's about all I got to deal with. <laughs> so, oh, if you can do that. You talk about the upper what, upper three percent. The upper three percent is really where you get to. You have a lot of quite a bit of money. And like, well, for who? When? If I sell my house in a year, it's going to put me in the upper three percent. It might put me in the upper one percent. Right. Right. So, so what are you talking about? And so, so this is the problem: is many many things are not mathematically reducible. Right. And so we have this fiction that a, in other words, for example, uh, uh, one of the things I like with Peter Zihan is he uses these demographic uh, models which show, show how many of each sex on either side of the, you know, in every age range on either yeah. side of the axis. That's a really useful thing because it lets you know. But what it doesn't show is how many people are in what economic group during that uh, age phase, right? Age phase, which would be really, which if you had overlaid that, it would make a lot of sense. It's a lot easier to have money in your 40s, 50s, and 60s. Oh, yeah. Than it is your teens, 20s, and 30s. <laughs> I mean, it's just a lot easier to have money because you've accumulated this, you know, cause to. Uh, Gain it if you just have a house right right so uh or you know my the problem you know this is the, the my favorite one the race one well i mean is there a difference between 140 iq asian 
um, no, let's talk about African Middle Easterner, uh, European, no, Ashkenazi, European, and a Asian. Did I give it the right order? Yeah, because Asian is the most neonist. Um, well, there's a minor difference in our balance between verbal and spatial for neotenous reasons, right? And dimorphic reasons. I mean, the people don't want to go there, but I mean, it's just, there's a minor, minor variation. Right. But once you get to 140, it, you're, it doesn't make any difference. Right. right? right. What, you, what you get into that, of course, is in one culture, you develop a particular set of flavors and values, and that's more likely to affect anything than anything else for intuitions yeah right i mean you know it's like engineers around the world get along just fine because we're all engineers right i mean it just it, you you think this is problems yes. these are just the world exists of real reality and not hypotheses so so you know when i say people say these problems well the races have different iqs that's that's not true the races have different class sizes Right. Right. And that's for that's because of geography. <laughs> Pretty much. You know, and so uh, and so the class sizes are going to create a different uh, distribution. Is there a difference between uh, the top? You know, I mean, um, you sort of have the, the the white middle, the Asian mathematical and the Ashkenazi verbal. Right. right. You have that sort of. Um, equilibrium among the most uh, um, cultures who've <laughs> done the most eugenics um, uh, over time. So the, the problem here is that, that a lot, when I said yesterday, Brad, how are we going to talk about what, what you've got to get over? Right. You've got to get over the fact that of mathiness, Right. That math is a gold standard. It's not. It's a gold standard in those things that are mathematically reducible because of their of causal invariance, which basically means a lot of the physical world. Yes. I feel like I'm boring you. No, no. It's like the interesting function is that it's um, it's like the uh, the causality is easy up until the behavioral sciences. Anything, yes, exactly. Anything that can choose, the, the, yeah, the it, it gets it complex, complexifies it. Right. So, I mean, the more sophisticated the life form, which is what can choose, right? The more, in other words, I mean, you know, things can sexually discriminate. Very, very simple life forms can sexually right. discriminate, right? So they can choose. But basically, the mathematical reducibility is the inverse of the ability to choose. Yes. Because the ability to choose is based on the ability to predict. Right. So the ability to predict is based on your accumulated knowledge to be able to create scenarios and predict them, which is basically this, the number of neurons in your brain. Right. Right. And so, so the, 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 so the more, the more choice involved, the less prediction is involved. When you move from mathematically reducibility to fixable, you may be able to mathematically reduce limits. In other words, some particular, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a, I, I studied um, uh, uh, tobacco viruses right. when I was in high, in high school. So I have, I can use that as example, but I mean, there is a margin where they succeed and fail. But what happens within that margin, I mean, in, Fuck knows, and there's a lot of variation that can be there, right? I mean, and then you get up to you know, you know, your dogs, and there's a little bit of margin, but they can be all over the place. You get to chimps and right bonobos, and then you get up to humans, and we're all over the fucking place, right? Anything I mean, can happen. And so, because the more prediction you can do, the more opportunity you can seize, the more variation you can attempt. And right. what's more interesting is the, which defeats the argument for determinism is the more errors you can make. Yeah. Right. And so that's why I said there's no super determinism for humans because we can make errors. There are just limits. 
and we, we so so the, the our ability to what we would call free will or the ability to really imagine the world is of course limited but it doesn't mean it's deterministic it, 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 within what our limits are so I'm, I, I'm oh, I don't get it. I don't, I'm extremely worried. I'm not making sense. No, you're making sense. I don't know where you're headed, though. I'm like, okay, I'm 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 hanging with the program. Okay, so where I'm trying to to head is, is where I just stated is that we have a gold standard that's bullshit, <laughs> right? the The means of uh, the means of determining a law is governed by the amount of uh, choice and the lim to until you get to the point of limits. Whereas the problem for the physical world, its limits are zero. Yes. I mean, the only thing you're gonna change Founded. is how much free energy is there, therefore that's it. Right. But, but, but the, the limit is, zero. the problem when you get to humans is the limit is God the fuck knows what. Because the imagination is unbounded. Right. And so continuous recursive disambiguation is limitless. The ability of humans to construct language is limitless. The ability for us to look at the world and make observations about it in various general sorts and a sorts in order to attribute different values to different categories is limitless. Right. Now, it, that doesn't mean that in the aggregate, we can not identify limits, which is what econo macroeconomics tries to do. Right. It tries to say there's going to, at the end, it's, you know, ISLM and all this. I don't want to get into that, but um, in, in macroeconomics, you're trying to basically uh, say, well, given these limits, the population has to do something like this because it's got to maintain some set of equilibria. Right. Right. Excuse me. It will always, the, the correct falsificationary answer is humans will always seek disequilibrium, which means they will seek to exploit all opportunities. Right. The, uh, but whatever, but they will always return to a prior state of equilibrium, which is the exhaustion of opportunities. Yep. So we're always trying to stay ahead of the exhaustion of opportunities. Right. But that set of limits, which is uh, macroeconomists are not bad at this. Right? They're bad at predicting, but they're not bad at explaining because you can't predict. It's almost impossible to predict. What it's, com well, com it's computationally irreducible. I mean, uh, we can reduce it to the computations of, of behaviors, right. but it's not mathematically reducible. It's merely constructible. It's merely constructible. That's we can explain in retrospect that it was constructed. So when somebody says to you, well, the, you can't uh, you can't say that. And I'm like, I absolutely can. You know, I mean, it's like, is money neutral or not? I don't know if that knows what it means, but if you increase the supply of money, right, right, um, will everything eventually equilibrate? Well, it turns out that it's lossy. What does that um, mean? It's lossy. It means that that there are a mi there are a million. Uh, think of it this way there are a million little like drawers and cabinets and books and things where where money in the physical sense can disappear right but there's also all sorts of sort of quantitative and qualitative places where money goes that that doesn't tend to bring you back to the prior equilibrium in other words right. it's a lossy function which is what you'd expect right well the same thing with like macroeconomics and sticky prices Right. I mean, prices are sticky. Contracts are sticky. Why? Because people are sticky. Why? Because neural economies are sticky. Right. And so uh, so there, so these things are sticky. So that doesn't equilibrate. But you still can make the general observation that, you know, uh, uh, this is a general rule of arbitrary precision. Right. I mean, it's still a general rule that money right. money is either neutral or non-neutral i'm like well the answer is it's sort of in the middle there kind of um in in reality it, it's it's it, over time it will tend to neutralize right. it will not ever reach neutral this is you just have too many lo lossy functions in the economy so, so the, when you said, when I go back to it, I'm going to try to 
again, I'm I'm doing my I'm doing my best here, and I feel like I'm. You're doing good, man. My I'm eyes forward. are bothering me, and I'm I'm hanging ten. Okay, so uh, the the point I want to make is, our we have a criteria that we call science. Right. In other words, what's testifiable. Um, and the the people who are who think that it has to be mathematically reducible. It's it's not that they're just wrong. It's that it realistically, under once you do mult, if you become multidisciplinary, yes, you realize it's kind of stupid. Yeah, that is not a it's uh, in insufficiently. Uh, well, you can't look at neurology, econ economics. Uh, uh, you can't look at physics, uh, physics, neurology, economics, and law, and economics and law being the same positive and negative of things. So you can't look at that and say um, every every rule is mathematically reducible. You can, however, say that rule most rules are verbally reducible. Define verbally reducible, please. Um, um, uh, you know, supply and demand is verbally reducible. It's a, ver it's a, ver a statement of verbal reducibility. Right. I, there's times to be it's just a it will generally apply in most cases that's not the same as saying gravity is the inverse is right gravity. right All right and so uh, uh supply demand is a law a, a law within the limits of precision of the system by which the calculation is produced right, right. So um, so one of the things we have to get people over is that there is that, is this, is it associatively reducible? Is it imaginable? Is it verbally reducible? Is it operationally reducible? Is it mathematically reducible? And because that sequence is basically what's reducible. Now the question is, are you trying to lie now about which reducibility is required? Ah, the necessity of reducibility. All right. So, so the the <clears throat> the the so what you're trying to do is you say I'm creating a, a when I say reducible, I'm looking for a failure uh, the the limit of uh, disambiguation. Yep. In the paradigm, in other words, person. Yep. Right. So you can lie like people in philosophy lie, which mm -hmm. is by saying that there's a, this is a contradiction. Well, there's no closure, so it's not a contradiction. We just don't know the answer to it. Um, and you can lie in science by saying, well, that's not a law because it's not mathematically or symbolically reducible. I'm like, well, that's there's there are our economic laws. They're just they're they're uh, they they are false. They can be falsificationary. In other words, we can only explain data in retrospect. And there are physical laws which are predictive. We can explain what will happen. Well, that's because it's regular and simple and trivial compared to what's uh, what's uh, adversarially, uh, which which is uh, computable, and what and worse, what is adversarially computable. In other words, the sequence of human actions is possible. The sequence of ha actions of human actions that survive in an adversarial competition we call a market is smaller. Right. So, so there's a, so the this this idea that uh, this mathiness is everywhere, and so one of the things we have to, I mean, Wolfram's doing a great job in this, honestly. <clears throat> and we're ha and of course AI exposes this as, oh my God, this is a night, you know. The AI problem is a nightmare, right? What do you mean by that? Um, it is extremely difficult to introspect on a neural network to figure out what, why the hell it's doing what it's doing. Right. Right. Um, and the bigger that we use very small networks today. I mean, they call them deep neural net. They're not fucking deep. The human mind, the human brain is fucking deep. Okay. Right. I mean, um, and they aren't really neural networks. They're pat. They're Bayesian accounting systems, right? So they're it's overstated because a neural network has to be able to self-organize regardless of the inputs, 
uh, you know, you know, be able to categorize resources, and these things don't do that. They just do Bayesian accounting based on some predetermined set of things. So um, that's why they can pre-calculate all this stuff in supercomputers and then download it to your car or your okay. other machine, and it can work with it because all the all the intelligence has been done. All right, all right, uh, because this thing can't actually adapt. It can only choose. Well, chooses and not adapts. That's interesting. Um, the, the 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 success at choosing appears to be adaptation, but it's just that. So what happens if you're driving around your Tesla? Oh, no. Is it says, it says, wait a minute, I don't know what the fuck to do, and Tesla gets told that. And if they get enough, I don't know what the fuck to do. Is in this particular circumstance, uh, they they go through and they. Say, how do we handle this? So we create a new loop there, uh, feedback loop. Right, we create a new training to train the network to handle it. Any event, so uh, so so I my first point here was to uh, was to clarify the problem with epistemology as we understand it. Right. The purpose of epistemology is for us to be able to produce testimony. The purpose of science is for us to be able to produce testimony. We can only testify to what's testifiable. Okay. The testifiability of whatever system we're describing is dependent upon its method of reducibility, its maximum reducibility. Right. The maximum reducibility of any system is uh is reducible to its regularities <laughs> right some regularities are not they're just unique <laughs> they're irregular <laughs> well i mean if the same thing ever happened again it might turn out the same way but realistically we have everything from unique circumstances to total total uh, to totally deterministic circumstances right but you know, it's one of the why do juries work? Because if I can understand your incentives, I can predict your choice. Right. Because we all do pretty much the same shit. Right. Or the, 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 understandable, it's right? It's understandable, but it's not predictable. Ah. Does that make sense? That's that's quite interesting. It's understandable, which is to say computable. But it's not um, predictable because I. It, it's not. It's you're going to necessarily it. steal the thing you stole, right? right. And it, right. I can't tell if you're going to do it or other people will do it. But I, I understand why you did it. Right, and now add adversarially computable. Now create a simulation. A, go from a construction, which is what we think of as a theory, to a simulation, which is a market. And all of a sudden, I might be able to construct this thing, but I never can. I mean, it might be humanly possible to want. I'm killing Marxism right now. Um, oh, oh. You, you, that, you one, this, that really deserves a red flag. So, so what is what may be um, operationally reducible and testable right. may not be simula uh, may not be adversarially survivable. In other words, yes, it's not so it's it's it doesn't survive the marketplace. Correct. Which is that's Marx. Well, I mean, th th that's his thing. I mean, he, he, I don't know. I keep running into these guys who say Marx was Marx was insightful. And I'm like, it look how many false premises this is all built on. First, you know, the the labor theory of uh, that's nonsense. Right. Second, the concept of society is mandatory. In other words, other people have a claim on me. That's nonsense. Right. right? I mean, they're, 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 you go on from there and they just, it all breaks down. Um, humans are amoral, acquisitive creatures that are uh, eminently practical. We I develop don't... morality simply because it's more practical. It's more efficient to do that, right? It's just more practical to be a, a, an ethical and moral person uh if you uh, can a afford it to be moral and ethical the problem is some people can't afford to be ethical and moral uh, what does that so mean can't afford to do it 
It may not be, I mean, it's the water, it's the water in a desert problem, right? You and I are in a desert. Um, right. And we can't uh, afford to be ethical because we got- I can't afford to be ethical. One of us is going to die, right? I mean- Sorry. Sorry, that's just the answer. Um, right. So ethics so, is, it, there's, a, there's, a, there's a certain, so an affordance of morality, right? You have to be able to afford eth morality, which means you have to produce enough non-scarcity. <laughs> Surplus, right. Uh, which is division of labor, because that's what, where we're going with the markets. This correct. I mean, so, and, and since the division of labor is incomprehensible, right, uh, what, what you do is you end up with a, an adversarial market on which only certain things are, constru are adversarially constructible despite that many things might be um, uh, rationally constructible and other things might be uh, theoretically constructible or you might be able to imagine that they could happen. And so this is what I call adulting. <laughs> adulting is the difference between your hypothesis based on what you can imagine can happen, the theory, which is what you could actually act on yourself, and the survival of from adversarial competition, which means what actions that you try to perform will succeed, succeed and produce the ends, because everybody has different incentives, uh, to, and, and that's everybody has different incentives based on the division of labor, resources, time, and space and age. So this 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 is interesting. It came up yesterday in my conversation. Um, I was chatting with my dear wife and she said something about the health record should be uh would be be would be better if it was under control of the individual and um transportable between platforms or but right and i said i said that's theoretically possible and the market will not support it because there's no demand for that thing and she says she argued with me and i'm like you're you're arguing about uh, the potential good and it's like the, and you forgive my terminology here, the dumb fuckery is too great. <laughs> and it's like, it's like the uh, the issue is this is that that the 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 uh, the incentives are in such a manner that is contrary to that outcome. There is yes. no there is no there is no way that's good. That it can't even begin to enter the marketplace because it's just a, an idea that is childish. <laughs> I have a, this is funny, I have, uh, I learned because of my background to have a go bag, what's called a run bag, uh, which is a, it's a military intelligence diplomatic That's right. problem. Um, and you, uh, uh, and in, in my go bag, with, really with all, with me at all times, right. I have my passport, at the time, I used to carry quite a bit of money as well, a zip back behind a zipper. And um, I had a few gold, a piece of gold, uh, yep. gold coins. And I keep my, in a plastic bag, I keep my medical history. Um, and so if you have your passport, your medical history, you know, um, some money. <laughs> pretty good. That's as good you, as it needs. You can get them anywhere, right? It might, it might take some walking but you can get anywhere you can probably get a gun um hi so um not even life is good so it but so it goes to this the, the interesting part is that the 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 more social the least social so mathematically reducible is non-social pre-social before function yes and then the uh, social is a during function, and then like uh, evolutionarily functioning is 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 the least constructible element of it, I suppose, which is it's not reducible, but it is um, evolution is an interesting function because it's the open-ended part of it. Well, I mean, uh, let, let's take what you just gave example, which is quite interesting. The physical world can only permute so many things before it comes up with life, right? Life is really useful because all of a sudden you got memory. Until then, you've got structure as the only means of memory. But right. uh, once you've got life, you've got RNA, DNA, 
you've got the ability to remember stuff. Yep. Right. And you would say, well, Kurt, that's structural. I mean, I mean, atomic structure is different from from a means of uh, addition, subtraction, you know, et cetera, multiplication, division. I mean, right. genes can do all that, right? I mean, you get more of some particular section, you can produce more of a particular thing, right? Um, and so, uh, sorry, I went down a rat hole. Um, uh, so, so what you described is is interesting, and then we get to sex, which allows for more recombinations. Right. And then you get to discretion, right? Which of sex, which is selection. Right. And then you get to um, uh, motion, right? Just you know, the move and act and whatever complex action. You get to uh, change, modify the environment. Right. And then you get to prediction, which is where hunting comes in. Right. And um, then you get to outwit the environment. And then you get to complex thoughts, which is outwitting the environment more and then you get to social socialization which is division of labor and then right. you can compute more and then you get to um uh the division of labor as we understand it in production distribution and trade or knowledge production distribution, and you have even more variation so so uh so i think that when you say what is evolution possible well evolution is the only thing all those things have in common yes it's an increase in the computability uh, in the means of computation available to the the energy that's been captured so far. I think I'll say right. that again. It's the amount of computation available, to the amount of energy that's been captured so far. Like the human being is a capture of quite a bit of energy. Brains are really fucking expensive. Yes. Now you wouldn't know that from talking to some people, but they are. <laughs> Even those guys' brains are expensive to operate. <laughs> That's funny right there. Sure. But I mean, so so the, the problem is, is that as that computation increases, the ability to uh, predict increases and the ability to err increases. Right. Right. So we have ability to err as well. We have mutation. Yeah. We have selection. We have um, uh, and choice. And so as we move up that scale, oh. our error or determinism becomes narrower, right? I mean, uh, our determinism becomes uh, less uh, determinable because our field comes up. And that's because we also can make errors. And there's this war right. between successes and, er and failures. And thankfully, we interestingly remember some of them. We remember failures for some for for obvious reasons far more intensely than we remember successes because they're so fucking costly it's an interesting function it's like pain is memorable more than than success and right. you learn more from pain than success because don't do that again well yeah it really hurts and it's and it's costly right whereas you know there, there's a lot of means of getting success but you don't want to repeat you right. want, it's like not not it's like the via positiva you want to have as many possible i mean the think of it this way the the mind works the memory works by the via negativa right you have to learn some things that are great but any good is good but all the bads are really bad or worse <laughs> yeah yeah so anyway so uh, i've got i'm trying to make sure i've got my first uh arguments sort of down here and what i think i can do from this discussion is draw a few diagrams okay. and show that um uh show this basic principle and therefore what determines a law and how uh ver how much variance there is in the law right so, so what's the means of reduce what's the maximum reducibility given the system category of the system we're trying to describe right and the category of the system is determined by the means of computability of the system the physical world is deterministic because hydrogen and oxygen are not going to wake up tomorrow and not decide to have kids it's called water right it's not going to happen you know you i might wake up tomorrow and think you know what you're fucking ugly 
All right, I don't want to have sex with you anymore. I've had that happen once. Very weird. <laughs> <laughs> once is enough, right? Well, I just, I don't know. It's, it's, there's a movie scene. I can't remember who it is. And the actress uh, who's playing the character says, uh, my husband walked out of the bathroom wearing just his socks. And in that moment, all my attraction went out of me. <laughs> and I thought that was a great line um, because I've been, in, I, I have a very specific, very attractive little Swedish girl, born Swedish, white, white, almost white hair. And, um, and uh, there was something about her chemist, body chemistry that, that I picked up on. And like a fucking light switch, I just never want to be around her again. Huh. Really weird. Very strange. Anyway. Um, Life is interesting. Huh? Un un unpredictable. It's, not, it's computable and constructible, but not predictable. Listen to you. <laughs> right? Dishing it out. It's <laughs> just like that. Here I am. I'm still alive. So I, I think the, the so the, the the point I'd like to get across here is that um, the the next point the higher level point right I have one more that I got to make here is that uh, the the uh, Greeks treated math as engineering okay and De Descartes re brought it back to reality. And during the late 19th and early 20th century, they re-mystified mathematics. Um, and that's been a problem and it's still the, the fundamental problem. And that problem is worse because math is considered a gold standard and it's not. Computability is the gold standard. Mathematic reducibility is just one of the tools, one of the tools uh, by which we Test whether something's destructible. I see. It, it fundamentally all that I say fundamentally all mathematics is statistical. In other words, it's it's uh, the creation of general rules. Right. Um, uh, operations can be uh, sometimes can be uh, summarized, but in many in some cases, op sequences of operations are unique in time and space. Yes. Correct. Okay. So um, did I make my, okay. So, so if I can shift my head over. Okay, so now we have the problem of when we say the word theory, what the <laughs> hell does that mean? <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I try to disambiguate between uh, faith, which is religion, belief that is, um, Interesting uh, philosophy. Um, <laughs> theory, which is science, and trust, which is action. Okay. So I'm gonna draw, write that down. Faith, belief. Yeah. Uh, uh, theory. Trust. And trust. And so um, that's very interesting because it goes it goes from a um, abstract, most abstract to least to to more uh, reduced to action. I should have put demonstrated. That's right. Uh, so that's. So I have faith when I have little information and I, right? And I'm going okay. to some tradition, right? Or I'd be, I, I don't have enough. I have belief because I have a, a rational expectation. I have a theory because there's a system of measurement that has come about that appears to be explanatory, somewhere between explanatory and predictive or both. Right. I have trust because, per, because I have experience with this and I can, right, and enough to act on confidence, it. Confidence, right. 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 And I have uh, demonstrated it because, well, I mean, it just, it's, it's, it just happened, right? I mean, it was, it was existential. So, uh, 
this is so we tend do you notice how we use these words like as if they're synonyms yes all right so yes, and they're 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 not the same it's a measurement of uh of of uh there's an information loading correct to the right of that uh series which is the the, the right is certain Im information and they becomes increasingly uncertain to the left yes well, I mean, but sometimes I have to, I mean, it's like I tell, I mean, I don't, I, I always forget which general said this, but um, it's somebody we should know. And he says, look, you know, when it comes down to it, if I, if I can't, if I have to decide and I can't decide, I make the moral choice. Okay. He says, and, and, the, and in one of those cases when I'm not sure what that is, I look it up in the Bible. Right. Why? Because I'm not going to get blamed for it. Right. In the absence of information, don't try to don't be vain. Right. right. A, a play to the a play, play to the wish. Right. Because you're being accountable for other people, other people's lives. Right. <clears throat> so I mean, there's, it's not like faith is ir irrelevant. <laughs> you know I mean? No, it is. It's like yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, that will be metaphysical alignment, right? Yes. So, I mean, if you're within the limits established by your people, then then if and if you fail, uh, it That's wasn't right. because uh, it wasn't because you were um, out. You are outrageous. You're right, or, or you were prideful, or yeah, yeah, your sinful behavior. Um. So so we have this. So the problem is. What do we what do we mean by a theory? Well, there's there there there's two sort of parts to it: a positive and a negative, of course, right? Right. So we we brace it. If you look at how we use a theory, not how we claim it, but how we use it, we create a story that functions as a search algorithm. Okay. And then we have a set of operations or measurements to test it. Right. Right. And so uh, it's like saying gravity. And this is important because uh, I feel like I'm boring you. No, I'm, I'm good. I'm just, my eyes are bugging me. Okay. So, um, so for example, the theory of gravity. Yep. Right. The story is the story the observation remains consistent the story increases in detail and the measurement right and causality right the cause the measurement and the causality uh increase so we have the same thing there which is the cause the measurement and the uh the story so the search, uh, the test, and the cause. Right. And we have those in those three areas. And so we have a linguistic model, a computational model, and a first principles model. Does this make sense? Okay, I'm, 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 I'm not certain that I'm- We have first that. principles that are cause. Yep. Right? Above that, we have a, a computational, right? A constructible model, too, computational. Right, and then we have the verbalization of it. Is that and we have the verbalization, <clears throat> which is search, test. Yep. Pause. Right. And so. The, the point I want to get here is the computational model can be associative, right? Associative um, uh, computational or reduce, you know, it's what's the method? What is your method of redu the reducibility? So when we talk about lying, what's happening? Huh. I'm sorry, did I make the jump too fast? No, no, I mean, it's good because it's like the lying is like 
It's um we're we're we're, we're using the computational model that's unsuited for the domain. Work, can't can perform the task. There's right. It doesn't it doesn't reduce. Right. It, so the what measurements we're using. Okay. Right. So uh, that's what I was trying to get to is that when we talk about a theory, there are three pieces to it. There's the verbalization of search, all these things we want to be as parsimonious as possible. But there's the verbalization of the search criteria. That's a really general rule that allows us to say, well, that's because of gravity, right? right. Um, um, that's because of supply and demand. Supply and demand is a great one because it's so like, well, there's like, there's so many, <laughs> so many layers. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's it, all supply and demand is saying, well, there's an accumulation of, there's a compute com accumulation of adversarial operations that tends to produce a basic trend, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. It, these the set of comp comp right, a statistical function. Right. It's just a statistical function. Um, so when when we lie. What we do is we try to lie, we often try to lie about the computational model that's necessary to support the verbalization. Okay. Did I, uh, I didn't do it. No, and it's like, so what's interesting is like, it's unfounded on first principles, right? right? And it's like, so, so we're, we're creating these dangling, it's like dangling participles or something like that. And which that we're we're distracting the attention of the receiver of the lie, yeah, by causing a false search that is not reducible by computation, by but we're providing a uh, distraction. Yeah, can I kiss you now? Because that was really good. Is that good? <laughs> it's like that. It's like it's interesting because it is like okay. So because it all it, all it comes down to is distraction. It's really all it is, right? I mean, when we say it's loading, framing, and overloading, that's right. really everything. You're 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 adding adding uh, uh, weights and measures. You know, you're putting your finger on the scale, loading, right? You're lifting your weight. Uh, you're framing. You're uh, stating uh, causality, all right? And you're obscuring, and you're removing. You're leaving out information. Right. So you're, you're you're so it's like values, causal relations, and a subtraction of causal relations. So yeah. right. So it's positiva and negativa. Yeah. So when you're so and and all and so this I'm trying to how am I trying to tie this together? It's I mean you did it so elegantly. Uh, my point is the grammars are all means of i mean all language is measurement right all logic is computation right all, all and and either you're starting with first principles or you're not you're applying right. the computational model or not and you've described a thing uh uh, uh described a thing uh correctly or not i mean uh, truthfully or not right and so th th there's this it's this before during and after sh Okay. So frustrating. Okay, just talk about the before, during, and after a little bit more. Well, I mean, uh, 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 it's just first principles. What's the cause? What's the That's, action? Computation ability, and how do we describe it before, during, and after? I mean, it's the same. Right. And so you know, it's like we're telling everybody the world is consists of evolution of by Markov chains that consists of before, during, and after states, right? I mean, that's all we're saying, and that that the that uh, the the dirt the, the first principles that exist that are fairly fixed, which we know what they are. There's a bunch of computational models, and there's a bunch of search algorithms we use in order to simplify the work of communicating the model. And so we send these symbolic labels around verbalizations. That search for things, but I mean, that's that is what's always going on in the human mind—a symbol, that's right, right, a verbalization, which is a search criteria, uh, an appeal to a certain me method of comp computability, and some set of presumptions about first principles. And so, right. it's it, 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 that's all that's going on. 
Mm -hmm. So lying, lying is distracting the, the other human for get some purpose. Right. And we do it like the, the problem is, is that truth is parsimonious and lying is like, it's cheap, easy, plentiful. It's a, it's an infinitely for infinitely producible resource at zero, at almost zero cost. Right. Uh, and people want to believe lies. They are biased in that direction. They, they really want to believe them. Well, there's a marketplace for them, apparently. Fuck. Right? Because it's like there's a demand for, for um, non-truthful uh, fictions, right? And it's like uh, apparently a very large demand because there's so many, which is the, um, it's like this, it's, it, it comes down to attention, I think, as the ultimate yes. um, uh, commodity. So, um, attention leads to suggestion. Attention leads to suggestion, but it's like attention is, 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 is there's too much time on my hands. Can you distract me for a minute? <laughs> so it's too much uh, surplus. Because in a, in, a, in a circumstance where there's insufficient, like privation, there's nobody has time for listening to the lie. So a surplus generate the, the surplus generates the uh, the demand for lies and the liars supply. Correct. Echo oh, interesting. Is that true? Surplus of what? <laughs> surplus stuff, man. It's like surplus I don't know. Of time. It's like I have too much time on my hands. No, why do people lie except to save? It's so, not because things are surpluses. They want attention for a cause. Right, but they're doing that to, to, because of a scarcity. No, they're doing it because the other one has a surplus. Of what? Time and stuff. Oh, I see. Okay, so that's, that's uh, I, I have a scarcity. In other words, that's the only reason to act, right? Uh, I have a scarcity, and this person has a surplus. But that that one, and, and, that and is paying attention to my nonsense. Yeah, which is uh, has time to listen to me and affords it, right? Yeah. It's uh, so it's afforded. It's afforded attention. Yeah, which is uh, that afforded affordability is the interesting function there, in my opinion, because it's like it's tolerable, right? So the parasite's good as long as it's tolerable good enough it's acceptable until it becomes intolerable is that fair i don't know i don't understand why these human the human production is hard cooperation is hard cooperation at scale is really hard because you need trust um, and you need reserves. Like one of the problems with cooperating at scale is you have to have enough reserves to take advantage of scale. Right. So there's a huge incentive for people to, you know, get the greatest benefit in the shortest time with least effort, the greatest degree of certainty at the lowest risk. Right. People always do this. And which right. is just, that's, that's the acquisition formula. Of humans, it's just very simple, and it's all we do is we try to acquire. And uh, because trust is necessary in cooperation, we tend to, you know, exhaust. If there's a, if we can get a, a thing, and we can justify the trust, we may seize an opportunity for doing stuff that we otherwise wouldn't. And one of those things that we see the opportunity for is to believe magical things. Yes. Okay, so, so um, it's, it's, a, it's like promise of gain where there is none, potential actually. Right. It's right? Just, promise of potential gain where there is none is uh, is the one of the lies. 
Right. So that's the basis of seduction. <laughs> right. Him to have, right. So yeah. he, all, what we try. So this is why I get so upset about false promises, braiding into hazard, because right. that's what people are doing. They're using seduction um, to bait people into a condition where um, either they've um, either they. Uh, anyway, I mean, I'm trying to not go into ten thousand permutations. Bait people into a position where they believe they're going to get a gain what they're actually doing is is supporting a parasite yeah they can support that parasite directly like giving them stuff like con man right or they can do it indirectly by allying with a group of people who believe in something false in order to collectively force a social economic or political change right so, you know, we, we, we say there's a threat, you know, we're very conscious of threats and we are very intolerant of threats, but seductions are the same thing. Right. right? We're, we're just willing to, more willing to participate in a seduction because we haven't outlawed it. Right. Right. We, we, we've outlawed violence, but we haven't outlawed a seduction. Well, the truth is Muslims have outlawed a lot of seductions, except in the Islam itself. Well, why did I, I didn't mean that to be funny. Sometimes I understand. I, no, I'm just like this. It's so I just was uh, reminiscing. Um, um, the Muslims are right about women. Mm. Right. Okay. I didn't mean to go there, but that was <laughs> that, that is funny. Oh, my. And you did it again. See? My one holdout, <laughs> my one thing, my one sacred cow, I don't want to give up <laughs> just on, stepped on his toes. I is that are yummy women, and you did it again. <laughs> just go like this. <laughs> All right. Oh, women are yummy. I'm just trying women. to be on my best behavior, so I don't step on your sacred cows anymore. <laughs> you don't tell the audience that. That's not true. You find <laughs> joy in it. It's a, it's a lie. <laughs> right. I'm baiting the audience into hazard, Kurt. <laughs> I need more coffee. So do I. Uh, All right. Uh, All right. So, 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 hold on. I feel pretty good because you just spewed back at me a few minutes ago that you actually understood what I said, and the whole time I'm going through this, I'm like, maybe it's you know I only got four hours sleep last night. Maybe it's I have enough coffee. Maybe uh, I mean I thought I prepared for this. You did a good um, job. It was a, that was a hard one though. That's a hard one. It's a hard one because I didn't think of a story. Oh. Uh, it, what I need to do is say I needed to. It's like yesterday we were. This is where this is coming from, right? Yeah. This is coming from. How do I get people over? You know, what are the things that you're going to encounter that you don't understand? And I have to get people through this science problem. Right, Be right. Th this false belief in mathiness and science and whatever. Honestly, so, honestly, okay, yeah, right. That's a really hard one because it is. It's a. It's um. <laughs> it goes to this the premise of thinking, and and yeah, it's yeah. like it's like many people falsely believe themselves to be thinking. Be thinking, yes. <laughs> and it's an error. <laughs> and it's like that's really hard to convey the thought of it, and it's like, oh my. That's Auto associating the, and reacting is not thinking. There you go. If you're not falsifying, you're not thinking. <laughs> that, that that bit though, I I got there, which is the um, what? How reducible is the problem? Yes, is very similar to are you using uh, sophistry, uh, ideology? Uh, magic pseudoscience or occult theology to it's justify the same, to justify your actions right right you, it, it, there, it I, I haven't figured out if it's another category there's right? a, it's a reflective words, function there's a reflection there which is like wait a minute actually, wait, let me get we know yeah we know what sophistry the uh, uh I, I, philosophy are we know what uh, magic pseudoscience are we know what a cult super we know what those are but do we need to look at 
uh, the means of computation along, in other words, um, do we need to look at computation as another? I mean, does it fall in within one of those? Because it's a systematizing problem. Within one of what? One of those categories. Is it like? Is it within uh, sophistry to philosophy? Is it within magic to pseudoscience? Is it within the occult to theology? Or is it something else? It's something else. It's something else. Because it's, there's a um, the issue is this. So if we Taken oh, that was really helpful. Was it? <laughs> we we look at a, a human action, then we act the ask the actor to take account for why they did the action, and if they reflect back to pseudoscience, sophistry, etc., or they reflect on accountability via computation, which is demonstrated functionality. So it's a reflection on concrete results versus verbalness. Okay, so it's, a, it's, 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 it's the next step. It's the step between loading and framing and, soft, and fictionalism. What's that? Um, in other words, uh, the fictionalisms are the three things I just stated, right? Okay. Right, and, and usually I, I add denial right after them, right? Yeah. Just, and then after denial, it's undermining, right? You're, yeah. So you go from loading and framing to fictionalisms, to uh, denial, to undermining, right? To, and social construct. So that's okay. the escalation path of the seat. Right. It becomes a let me get away with this, uh, to uh, I, no, I'm not going to play, to now I'm going to come after you. So it's part of the, Basically, it's like I'm gonna, I'm gonna pretend to co-op. I'm gonna cooperate. I'm gonna pretend to cooperate. I'm gonna boycott denial, and I'm gonna war. Does that make sense? It's yeah. the same process. So descending um, anti-ethical in an anti-ethical pattern. Right, and so the 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 there's some, so this, this this so you go from loading and framing. That's great. So, does miscalculating? <laughs> where does that go? It's just an error. It's an error. It's just oops. It's oops goes before loading and framing, right? And maybe it's it's in there in that range of loading. It's because I I, I, I no, loading is emotional. Okay. So this is su some sort of substitution. It's a calculate calculating error. It's what it is. Loading, framing, obscuring, substituting, inflating. And now we're going to have to spend like <laughs> all this time on substituting. Substituting and um, wait. Fictionalizing. Substituting, fictionalizing. Yes. Because what you're doing is you're you're, you're playing a substitution game. Uh, it's another kind of conflation, right? It's uh... what's interesting about this is like the 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 premise of attention being uh, a, the 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 liar requires the attention of the person who is targeted. Yes, and it is attention based upon some credential function. The, the person has some credibility in some fashion that has unwarranted. That it's the failure of due diligence of the of the listener to the liar to understand that that one is is misleading them. It's a credibility issue, credit credulity of the listener and the excessive uh granting of credibility to the the liar yeah suspension of disbelief which is basically what's necessary versus a suggestibility well faith belief and theory are just the three fiction you know the 
Yeah. The three fictionalisms. Um, that, that's where fictionalism ends, right? Because it can't get beyond theory because it's not a practically. Uh, no, you have to go into. Because it's falsifiable if you test it. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you get it's, it's, it's all talkiness. Yeah, but we're, you know, I, I'm looking at this. Well, I was going to say, well, why isn't what we're just talking about? Uh, uh, so, you know, there's, we call it soto science, right? But right. maybe it's numerology. I mean, in other words, <laughs> there, there, there's something here that I'm not quite getting that feels like it's a parallel to the, you know, the, the fictionalisms and, it's a, it's, I think one of the reasons I get, I, I've had, this might be the case. I have a problem with um, mathiness because I distinguish it from pseudoscience. Oh, right. I mean, I, most people lump mathiness in with pseudoscience. I think that might be the problem. We could just call this mathiness. In other words, yeah, yeah. I mean, this, this problem is the fictionalisms also include happiness is among them uh, among them and then we get we disambiguate pseudoscience and pseudo mathematics into pseudoscience and pseudo measurement <laughs> okay that works i'm just trying to figure out how to how do we be, i mean because if i did that this would be really easy Pseudoscience and pseudo measurement is funny because it's like, okay, I'm going to tell you a story now. Maybe it will uh, see. I, the reason I tell, I'm going to talk to the audience now, Kurt, not talking to you right now. The reason I tell Kurt stories is because it loosens his mind up a little bit and it causes him to auto associate and come up with new answers that he didn't think of before. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm going to tell the story of, of what has been done with the um, COVID 19. Okay. What has been done is they. Are we going to get banned for this? Wait, it might. Have, I don't know, but they gave out all these test kits to everybody. And so now I have to listen to people tell me they how many times they tested and why they, and, I, and it's like, it's totally uninteresting to me because I did not order the test. <laughs> it's like this, it's like, when I ask you, you can tell me about your silly test, right? But there's a demand for, there's a demand there because they generated a false demand. It's pseudoscience, right? And there's a, now there's pseudo measurement because it's pseudo reporting on the pseudo scientific not demanded test by fake. It's false. Does that make sense? Yeah. And it's like, okay, now that was just that was me being a scientist, me being a scientist suffering in the trenches from another yes. theory. Sorry. It is. It's one of the things I see it. It's if I see that on the uh, complaint. When I'm, Can I ask you a question? Of course. Can uh, are there are the tests? Is the test of whether you've had COVID still around, and does it work? Yeah, that works. They have that, and it, but it is. It's just like this. It's okay. Sorry, I got that off my chest. Now I feel better, but I still need more coffee, Kurt. I need more coffee, and I want to come back to this because I think we just solved a problem. Perfect. I'm going to pause the recording so we can make coffee. Okay. All right. Go ahead. And we're back. Sorry, Brad and I have just been on this oh, wonderful there. little humorous tear of a journey. You were just a, what did you just bring up that I said? We got to turn this back on because I want to go into something related. Okay. We're talking about pseudo thinking. Well, we, we, we talk, well, first, I'll just give back. So first of all, I said, well, this turned out to be really useful because now we've disambiguated mathiness from, from pseudoscience. Uh, pseudoscience. And now we can just go down to epistemology and cover the fundamental problem. So this is, this is wonderful, right? And then we're, we're, Brad and I are talking about the, the basic problem between uh, this, the problem with uh, empathize. Empathy is a particular, not a general, right? Systematizing is a general, not a particular. And so, of course, empathizing doesn't scale. And so, uh, and so Brad, is, Brad and I are teasing is that people who empathize, they, they think they're thinking, but they're not. Right? They're auto-associating and reacting. 
and reacting. They're not thinking. And the systematizers are thinking, but we're, you know. But wait, uh, the, the point that I made that was the people that are empathizers can't imagine what it's like to think. That's they correct. Think, and they think they are thinking falsely. They're feeling. That's an interesting thing. And so we're, we're just, we're going down there and we're making a bunch of not, and I'm like, we got to turn this back on, and, right? So um, hopefully I won't forget what the fuck I was going to talk about now that- Get in there, man. I'm sorry. Sorry, Joe. Uh, no, I, I forgot. Uh, what was the last- Auto association and reaction is not thinking. Okay. So um, so the, 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 the problem is that empathizing doesn't scale, right? I mean, and it's right. not, so, you know, and this goes back to, I keep saying that it's like, this is, uh, I know what it was, remind me if I forget it, it's about dream states and sleepwalking. Yes. So, so the problem uh, we run into is um, that, that some people think we, they can think and other people think they can feel. <laughs> oh, that's funny too. <laughs> and there's some people in the middle who can do a little of both in there. It's pretty good. But anyway, and then another thing we did was that Brad and I were talking about um, about the diversity of lying, and we said, well, there's this, there's the uh, the sex, the triangle, of the sexes, like cable, you know, the, the normal triangle relations. And then we talk about the the moral triangle and then the political triangle, right? I mean, it ends up. Well, I mean, it turns out that there that if you look at the systems of lying we've enveloped, we've created a system of lying for every place, every every little bit of area on the triangle of cooperation, and it's it's just exasperating that we. It, it's amazing that we were so good at lie coverage, right? Of <laughs> And so there's a, it's an opportunity knocks. Yes, exactly. right? It's like the human beings are going to fill up every available niche and exhaust yeah. all opportunity. In including the niche for lying. Yes, sir. God. Uh, I, I would like to act surprised, but I'm not. <laughs> that just makes sense. Human beings, they're, what is it? Adaptable. Adapt their lies to the environment. This way, which goes to this premise and I, I i tried to call the man yesterday that is uh the the former phd student in um ecological psychology right which is what we're talking about it's just ecology and so like, there's going to be a liar there trust me everywhere <laughs> right and he's gonna he's just looking for someone to support him in his lies right that's all he wants to the exhaustion of opportunity at that location I'm watching Kurt calculate right now. It's just <laughs> the horror <laughs> of it all. It's spiders everywhere, <laughs> right? Spiders and creepy stuff in the dark, man. Everywhere. Oh, God. So, Sorry, <clears throat> so anyway. Um... But it goes down to the receptivity of the recipient of the lie. Yes. The credulity is what makes the difference. Yes, you need because the it, you need an you need an inoculation of natural law in order to understand in order to insulate yourself from lying, right? And now some people do. This is interesting. This is an interesting diversion. Now some people achieve this from religion, uh, religion or in all its forms. I don't mean like organized religion. I mean basically mindfulness. Yes. Right? And 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 the answer is if you stop giving a shit what other people can think think, which is what most of them are trying to accomplish. Um, you stop giving a shit what other people think. Uh, you're not so suggestible because that's how why suggestion is possible is because you care what other people think. A lot of it, a lot of it, right? Right. And so you become so so mindfulness is an involuntary kind of incredulity, which right is involuntary incredulity. Invol involuntary incredulity. So uh, I thought that was that, that was an interesting insight. Can, can I spin or did you want to go? Oh, go right ahead. I'm just right. So, so the, the next thing I wanted to sort of um, play with is, um, is you, you, do you ever have any patients who sleepwalk? 
I've, I've had, um, st I've heard stories, yes. And it is, uh, it's a, uh, like, there's like this, so th this goes to this, the use of uh, Zolpidem, right? It was like- Which, which so, one is Zolpidem? Zolpidem is Ambien. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so they, they, they used to be a 10 milligram nighttime dose for adults. They made it five milligrams for females because the females were doing all kind of stuff in their sleep. <laughs> 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 like, whoa, <laughs> unleash the what? Why? <laughs> sleep eating, sleep cooking, sleep. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, wait, what? And, and then wake up and be mad at their husband. <laughs> for their nocturnal misbehavior of somnolescent type. I don't know, but I'm thinking about if they had to become popular now, I'll just, yeah, Ambien, well, every uh, man yeah. would have ordered Ambien and then it would have end up crushed in his... They, why, 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 I tell you, man, and it's like, okay, it's like, what, I, I don't know how rare that was, but they, they changed the, the person, they, they lowered the dose on women. You can't give a 10 milligrams, you get five, because... But it's somnolescent behavior. Um, uh, I I uh, have Ambien. I I don't. I think I have the same prescription. I don't know how old it is right now, uh, because when I I would use it when I use time zones. Oh yeah, yeah. The problem is, uh, it makes me violent. Oh, it's disinhibiting. It's disinhibiting. It makes. Um, uh, <laughs> it doesn't make you violent. It just. Um, it allows me. you to I, express your voice. Yes, I'm, uh, my natural tenant on <laughs> tendency to want to smack people. My <laughs> unrestrained English <laughs> nature, sir. Yes, it's like the same reason I stopped. Uh, I stopped doing coke in college, is because the next day I could kill somebody. Uh, right, uh, just it, it's it's really not good, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> and I got into. Man needs well, to know his limits. Clint you, no, you just need to I mean. Yeah. So uh I, I was not good. So um I stay away, I stay away from drugs. Alcohol doesn't seem to do the same thing to me. I just get I'm just the same ridiculous person as I am, except I smile more. Right. Um, yes. So in any event, uh uh where was I going? Where was I going? I was going We're talking about dream states and all right. So um we all think of uh, of dreaming. We all understand dreaming, right? We can get that. And some of us understand daydreaming, right? You know, right. right. But there's that place between daydreaming and dreaming. And uh, so it's amazing what people can do in that, what we would call sleepwalking state, which is, so what 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 is going on? In other words, what's the medical ex explanation for how people are behaving in that state? If you know, if you don't know, I'll. Try I don't it. have a simple answer to that. It's a, it's interesting because it's like people do complex behaviors, and are it's like I call it um, operating on autopilot. Correct. Which is like when you're driving somewhere and you 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 are distracted when you're on your way somewhere and you turn down the pathway that is most familiar to you as yes. a habitual function. So it's like, it's like oh, the okay. operation of uh, subroutines that are below the level of consciousness. Correct. That's what I wanted to get. That's, that's what I was wanted to say. You're not conscious. Your, your subconscious functionality, which is like this, it's, it's a hypnotic state, right? You don't need to be conscious because really and, it's not that hard to drive. It's just, it's hard to get where you were trying to go if you're not paying attention. <laughs> well, it, it, it's a, you're predictive. You're run, not running on prediction and choice. You, you, yeah, you're, you're operating on a subroutine that is not conscious that you're not right. aware of. Right. But it is, and you're, but you're operating within the rules like like you're driving somewhere and you're operating within the rules, but you're not paying attention to where you're going, but you're getting there by observing the traffic patterns and rules and yes, not yes. you're not misbehaving, but you're 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 not paying attention, which is fascinating. Sure. Interesting function. I think it's I think it's really fascinating. Like I'm surprised. Like 
I, it's a pertinent my, point in my life. I developed the habit of instantly coming full awake, right? But I wish I hadn't because I used to like that. I used to like that slow right uh, point. Where, and some people in my family still have that. They wake up very slow. And my brother-in-law is like that. It's like two hours later, he's finally awake. Wow. Right? You know, I've been being sarcastic, but you know. Right. Um, uh, but um, there's a beautiful thing there. But I'm always surprised at what I can do when I'm pretty much we call half asleep, right? It can't be complicated. Like you can go to the bathroom and get a drink of water and go back to bed and not really wake up, right? Right. No, you can accomplish a lot if your your attention is focused, but your your body is asleep. All right. Right. You're not. You're able. You're you're able to act mentally activate and and perform high level functions without being really awake you're not i have to be awake you're just you're performing mental functions inside you're, you're, your head you're, well the point is you're feeling and intuiting but you're not thinking okay. right we're feeling and intuiting but you're not thinking you're uh, whether you, i'm not even sure you're aware but you certainly aren't conscious and the but what happens when you have to interact with someone now, when you have to interact with someone, especially if it involves speech, right? You, you, most people will come awake because that's a very uh, activating experience. Become conscious. Well, you can physically wake somebody up by calling on their attention. So you know, I, I actually. So I, I guess you know one of the ways to think about it is this: look at a cat and look at a bear. Okay. Right, the cat's this little little robot, right? They're amazing. They're, They're cats, amazing. The cats really are the whole the cat family is the most interesting, other than octopuses, which are because they're, they're, they're utterly right? fascinating. Those they're guys. utterly fascinating. Uh, cats are the most interesting because they're like they're even they're the crazy super predators on, uh, on right, and biomechanically they're they're basically perfect. Right. I mean, and that's why there are all these different scales of them is because they're they're basically perfect. Now, um, the, the problem is, look at a bear. A bear is the exact same numbers as a cat. And look how big it is. So, you know, think about what a cat's conscious state is like and a bear's conscious state is like. OK. The same number of neurons. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, whereas an elephant, I mean, if you go look at an elephant's brain, it, it doesn't have as, that many neurons on it, but it's fucking huge. Right. I mean, and, and if you look at the uh, cerebellum, not the cerebellum, it's enormous because they're coordinating this giant thing, yeah. mountain. <laughs> and if you look at the, if you look at the structure of the of that part of the brain, it's 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 this amazing set of funnels right uh, that's trying to coordinate all this action that that we're not even aware of right it happens way back there that's right it has to go through the brain stem to get to us right. so uh you look at a bear and you're like a bear is basically a cat that's dreaming <laughs> <clears throat> and you wonder why they act like they do <laughs> they're having a bad dream man <laughs> it's they they seem really stupid really i mean or they they're not really stupid but their sense perception of the world is kind of simple slow slow yeah, yeah. Slow. but they're stronger than hell Whereas you look yeah when you look at a cat and this sense perception of the world is just short of that of birds yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, you're super boom. fast <laughs> super fast and on no question so, you know, I always look at people and I'm like, you know, when I say people are bots, I, I think of most people like the bear, right? The, the, most of this stuff is happening. And you would say, I would say, we are getting enough stimulation to be aware and conscious. 
but it doesn't really mean many of us are thinking. We're mostly feeling, just like the bear, just like the cat. And so uh, when I say people are bots, I mean, we're, we're, we're the only reason, I mean, the, the reason I brought up the interaction piece is that what's the most activating thing you, a human can do is talk to another human. That's right. Right, that, that's the most activating uh, thing we do because it's the most complicated, right? I have to not only think what I think and predict what I'm going to think and way find that, but I have to predict what you're going to think, right? Way find a way to get there and then figure out how to merge the two. Right. I mean, so that, that's, we're, we're, we're using all this stuff up in the front here, right? You're going to bring it all the way from back there, all the way up there right. and move it around, right? And then we got to evaluate it and think about, is it going to like this or not? Or when, you know, we, you know um, and, but if you're in a dream state, you don't, you don't have to do that. You're just oh, a bot. I know. You're just a bot. And so, you know, the, the, how many of that's um, it's just easier to do that bot thing, just operating on the uh, auto association and, um, yeah, I mean, I, I like to go driving, right? I mean, I like, oh, yeah. I, I don't anymore because I'm not where I have and I don't have my Ferrari. But if I, you know, well, I take it the Ferrari. Go to, Look around. I just just go out and drive. You know, I don't know if the uh, I 90 starts in Boston and ends in Seattle, right? You just go out there, drive to the mountains, you know, find some place where there's no cops, put, put it up to 120, you know, uh, right here make your genitals vibrate you right. know, exactly you know um and pull into some coffee shop whatever and you just drive and it makes you you get to make use at least for me i get to make use of that time right which i think is very peaceful because car is basically armor right i mean it's just, right right um and so uh that's really wonderful but you know uh i really think that the bot or the inner bot for most people is in control. I mean, it's the question is how many people are actually conscious? <laughs> this is it. So this this points to you, you, and, and then how many people are thinking? Very few. Yeah, and I, and that's Bernays. the that's, Edward Bernays. So Sigmund Freud's nephew, who invented the, he wrote the book in 1922, Propaganda, and he it was about the 20th century, and it was on the principle of this. It's like this: most people have no clue what's going on. They're being programmed by someone that's not them. Their elites are. Programming, programming them for the betterment of society. And so that's the 20th century, which is the, I, I call it the, um, those are architects of the matrix within which the bots operate. So operating okay. system of the society, which is what we're objecting to, I think, which is the, the lies of it. Yep. And so, so um, but we, we have to cause the people to be aware of the fact that they've been programmed by, uh, malicious program right but the problem is they they like not thinking they do and then you know i i talked about earlier you know i, I was teasing i think we we're offline and we we're talking brad and i were talking about some of the interviews we we're planning and i'm like well you know the the the, the problem is that i went slumming now i got that term from the guy who one of the an author right but it basically means when an economist goes to the slums and lives with the drug dealers to learn about the economics of drug dealing. Right. Right. Now, the thing is, you can think about what drug dealers do, or you can go, or you, or you, you can read police reports about what drug dealers do. You can interview, you can go live with them and figure out what they really do. Right. So one of the things that's happened with social media is you can go slumming mm -hmm. and get into the minds of people in in a way that you you can't and there's never been possible before because you, normally if i want to go talk to somebody i have to do it in person i have to arrange some means to make it happen right there's some, but people who are out on social media they're leaving they're bringing their dream state they're bringing their dream state to this video game we yes. call social media and you can reach right into that dream state Oh, yeah. By asking very simple questions or proposing very simple arguments, or in my case, uh, kicking taboos. 
provoking moral outrage. Yes. And what happens is people will testify. Oh. Right? Pe people will testify uh, directly or indirectly in this new rat maze social science experience. So, um, and in, in the academy, it wouldn't be considered ethical. No. Right? But it works phenomenally well. Um, <laughs> it is. I, I would I would say it is it would be unethical because you're not you're doing experiments on people essentially without their without their, getting consent without their consent. But their um, their 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 performance is tacit consent. Correct. The fact that they participate is consent. They I'm, participated. I'm, I'm, I'm you did not them. twist anybody's arm, and it's like huh? you didn't cause. They could always disengage if they chose to disengage. So you just find a little piece of cheese of moral outrage. <laughs> Right, and, and the best kind of cheese is the one that offends everybody equally because it can be interpreted both ways. <laughs> the most, the most um, ambiguous moral outrage. Right, well, because because what happens when you do that is you learn how people interpret the same information signals. Yes, right by different according to different means, and so like <clears throat> if you run hundreds of tests like that, you begin to see these patterns when you're slumming. And I consider doing research on social media slumming. I think so. Right? right? I mean, it's the same. You have to go. The thing is, you don't have to hypothesize about the mind of Nazis or fundamentalists or ethno-nationalists or the working class or the laboring class or the incels, right? Any more than you have to fantasize about the harpies and the Karens, and the lefties, you know, and the losers, and the dysfunctionals, right? You get to go slumming on social media without the unpleasant action of having to cohabit space and time with them. Right. And what you learn is, uh, from this exercise, is of slumming, which is very different from the academic process of conducting research. Right, especially research, social science research, which in psychological research, which we know is false because people never truthfully self report unless you provoke their moral outrage. At which the point. So it's very similar to the work I did on lying, which is people are very similar in what we tell the truth, but it doesn't tell us anything about them. It's how we lie that tells us everything about them, it's how we're morally outraged that tells us our differences. By telling, once you know your moral outrage, you convert the negativa to a positiva and say what they want, want to say. Well, so, so uh, I want you to- In doing so, you, the, the point being you, I, I want you to continue. The, I just want to close yeah. with the point being that it's not that mo that some people are bots. <laughs> that was it's rude. A very, it's that very few people are human. All right. All right. Anyway, go ahead. So it's like the, this, Okay, so I'm, I'm trying to understand the, um, make sure I understand the methodology and the, the, the process of uh, experimentation that you're referring to. So we, we, we uh, spark moral outrage and we cause the person to testify and they will testify about that moral outrage by demonstrating their true interests. Is that how it works? And so it's like they're, they're uh, we will be able to understand their base motivation at that point, right? Right. This is Correct. A prime, the the um, first principle of their action. Right. You can. <clears throat> it's hard, and I've done it for thousands of people over a couple of decades now. All right. So, but you actually can identify. Okay. So, what do these people, commonalities? What's the commonality here? And um, and so you get truthful testimony about a via negativa that okay. you never get by direct interview about a positiva. And this is why I just am. That's the only reason I think social media is valuable as a social scientist. Now, Brandon's hooked on this is too. We do just do social science. It's just that they don't people don't like the method of research we use. Right, and we get a bad reputation, justifiably, for using this research method. 
But then on the other hand, I can tell you what the reasoning is behind every faction, right? Because they, they're all reliant on a very simple set of logics. Okay. That we can, that we know, and that's just, I'm trying to acquire and I'm either trying to evade responsibility or obtain it. And that's because I have, uh, I either believe I can succeed under X rules or I don't. Um, and so you, you, you so it is like this, it's like that it's interesting because it is like the avoidance of responsibility is like, um, right. Is, is it's oppression if the rules don't favor me, yes. <laughs> right? And um, if the rules do favor me, that's a equitable system. Yes. It, it'd be, what's, so, like I said, it's just disambiguating into first principles, whatever's causing behavior. And I always say that, you know, I'm just surprised that, I'm actually surprised that, you know, the big five, big six, big seven uh, actually got so close. It's even more surprising those crazy MBTI chicks, right? That were just, they got close. I mean, the overlap between MBTI, which is just a bunch of chicks talking, right? Uh, uh, and uh, and uh, the research that was conducted by personality surveys, it just surprises me that how they're, that, that how accurate these things are. And it turns out that that behavior we can describe as biochemical, which is the intersection of three sets of chemicals and a simple three dimensional grid. So. You know, but when when I look at it, I'm like, yeah, but it's missing empathizing versus systematizing, which is the origin of all differences. Everything else is just how we process information, depending on how we're, you know, it's a before, during, and after state, personality traits, based on whether, you know, our, uh, on um, whether we're empathizing or systematizing. <laughs> you know, it's just right in uh, the rest of it's just neural productivity, which is we call IQ. So, right. So these things are great, but the thing that got me was how cor cor equally correct uh, uh, the moral foundations were uh, by Tom, by uh, by um, uh, Hate. Uh, what's his name? Jonathan Hate. Jonathan Hate. Um, uh, and that he got well. I mean, of course, they did it on a large enough sample because they were able to use the internet as well. So they were they had a the guy who wrote the questions is quite talented. And so they were able to come down and I'm like, well, these are just, these are just um, uh, empathizing versus systematizing and their differences in um, responsibility uh, given the masculine and feminine distribution, right? So the, the, I'm just surprised how accurate <laughs> these things are, right? right. Um, uh, but it's like, they're not this overly generalized or something. You know what I mean? It's like, it, so my, my study of the psychologists is it kind of comes down to their uh, generally agreeable and they they don't they're 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 more empathizing more than they're systematizing in my opinion right um because they're like this they're they're they they're the the operations that they seek to conduct don't scale correct i mean it's like it's like it's like you know why do people if we taught neurology economics and law the grammars uh neuro economy economics and legal economy you have neural economy we have a you know if you just understand those basic things then you can look at psychology <laughs> but if you look at psychology independently you're independently you're, it's it's just a waste of fucking time well because you 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 see this i see this in uh, even in peterson who i i usually compliment on his mastery of the empirical data yes about human differences because he's he, he does have that and he is eminently quotable uh about the human differences um uh, and he's I've I found nothing to complain about. And anything he says, he's, he's spot on. And the data is it, it's just unavoidable. I mean, it's so much of it. Um, but like you say, if you go into this because you're agreeable and you want to promote agreeableness and you want to create equality and harmony, you're missing the fuck. Okay, it's it's um <laughs> but the issue is this is like what it's a there's a there appears to be a false 
assessment of the problems, the problems of the world. Okay, what's the problem with the world? And it's like, it's not the personality. It's not the adaptivity of the individual to the, you know, to the so, psycho, psychological stressors that are around them. There is an organizational problem here, and it is a systematic problem, and it is un accessible via the methodology of psychology. Correct. In other words, what they're searching for, is, what the, the information they're searching for is external to the... It, it, it's, the they, they, are, they are seeking to solve a problem with the solution set that does not encounter the, encounter the problem. <laughs> right. I mean, and it's again, it's another justification versus just positive justification. Let's get everybody to agree when the problem is just the opposite. The, 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 three, the reason you create harmony is you eliminate falsehood and you eliminate reciprocity, right? And then, so you make, you can't necessarily create a good. You don't know what the fuck it is. And it's different all over the place. You can, however, eliminate all bads. Now we may not, some people may not like their particular bad being eliminated, but we don't disagree on what's bad. And so you eliminate all the bads and you'll get the goods. Now. Some will say, but if you eliminate all the bads, then what happens to the outliers who need to be bad in order to survive? I'm like, well, I mean, that's a choice now. But you, 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 uh, personally, I prefer the hanging tree, uh, the gallows. Oh, what's your preference? <laughs> Name your poison. I think Maybe, that's I, I don't, you know, it's not like. Uh, we don't kill enough people, you know. Sorry. Oh my! Sorry, I just, I just took that, <laughs> that was gratuitous. Just to, just to see what I could Eat get. Up on the <laughs> but I mean, um, you know, and it's like, uh, like Scott Adams. And Scott Adams so beautifully on this message now is that uh, no, uh, you can't fix broken bad people. It's they're not fixable. The ones that are fixable are fixable because of them not because of what you do. The only thing that seems to matter is of the ones who are fixable, how far do they got to go down before they decide to get fixed, right? But the, there's plenty of people who don't want to be fixed or will, and really want to go down. That's correct. Right, so, so you can't fix those people and there's nothing you can do about it because they really don't. Irredeemably lost souls. Right. And so the problem is we all that the because there are people who are fixable, the opposition uh, has said that we just need to find a way that we can fix all people, and the uh, answer is you can't. You can only see this. Um, this goes to my uncle, the psychiatrist, told me this. Yes, he says. Um, he told me this joke. The joke goes like this: How many psychiatrists does it take to change a light bulb? Now he told me the answer was one. I said, I do truly believe the answer is actually zero. It takes no psychiatrist to change a light bulb with the caveat that the light bulb must really want to change itself. Yes. <laughs> right? And it's like, how that's did, where we're how at. Did he take, how did he take to that? He liked that. He, he's, he, he was a great man. That, um, yeah, it's like this is interesting world we live in. And I asked him this question once. I asked him, I said, you know, there's a, there's a story in psychology. You've heard of this, um, um, what do they call it? The, um, the, the I, I can't, I don't recall the name of it. The question is this, is people with multiple, my uncle studied multiple personality people and they are like subjected to some horrific problem that caused their personality to be bent in ways that are extraordinary on the edge of the bell curve and he got paid to study them so he enjoyed studying them but it's like this i asked him this question i didn't think to ask him until he's quite advanced in his age i said um there's two stories about why the split personality people appear and one of them is that they, they there are there are there's um rich ritual sexual abuse and then there's um that was planted in them by their uh their therapist by hypnotic means, right? Hypnotic suggestion. I said, what's the answer to this? Because I think he knows the answer. And he told me the bad answer, which is there's a cult like that in every town. And I'm like, oh, that's not the answer I wanted to hear, but I needed to know the answer. Anyway, so we're, it's like we're coming to the end of this, which is like this, this, um, 
the shadows are evaporating as we speak. There's not and not, there's the exhaustion of opportunity in the shadows. There's too many demons trying to fit in the shadows, and they're coming out of the woodwork. Yeah, yeah this is a, a, a great example. Is uh, we created an artificial opportunity, the Industrial Revolution, and it brought about the World Wars. The World Wars uh, created left America with an extraordinary opportunity to create a world that otherwise wouldn't be possible through economic asymmetry. The economic asymmetry has been exhausted. That means the opportunity has been exhausted means we're returning to a normal state, which means the world will reorganize according to it's the natural equilibrium that will exist between the civilizations. You know, so we're going to have the, just as, just as predicted, we're going to have a conflict of civilizations, which we're seeing now. And then the, and the quality of life that we have under the, will we'll probably return to more stable differences, which you can see during the 70s, is the, since the 70s. Uh, that, that's the, this things haven't gotten better because that's when the end, the post World War advantage just dissipated. However, what has happened since the seventies is we've had the uh, we had control of the world uh, financial military system, which provided us some certain uh, uh, financial uh, ability in that, and so that the, those financial abilities have resulted in a certain certain classes in America. Uh, main, in other words, maintaining the illusion of the persistence of of a uh, high state of living, but that's coming to an end. So that'll come down for what's happening in the stead there. And since that illusion is going away, the, av the average people who are tired of this, this asymmetry are saying, you know, I, I want America to go first now, which means I want to, I want to stop offshoring. So that'll come down and that'll re again, reinforce this system. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's all, it's all completely simple, and you're right. It's because we're at the end of exhausting this set of opportunities. And maybe we'll invent some new new ones. I don't know. It seems like all the ones we can invent are pretty fucking scary. Um, you know, uh, I, I don't. There was a. There's been a long running argument that we've exhausted the low hanging fruit, and that's the real problem. I'm not sure that's the case. I'm on the phone. Um, so the exhaustion of opportunity, and it is a, um, it's a, this is when they double down, right? Right, it's because everybody's trying to hold their position. They don't want to lose their status. And so it's like, they're going to double down. Everybody's doubling down. Yep. And it's like, well, what does that mean? It's, the, it's that's a bad, bad setup. So it's a, it's a, uh, tinderbox yep oh well sorry kids i don't want to end on a downer <laughs> well i mean just the, new opportunities will emerge i mean so right we're, we're, all right i'm out of gas and somebody's trying to Get, tell me something so you're real good kurt i want to thank you for spending a minute with me and i'll look forward you. to chatting with you here in the near future all right talk to you later boss bye-bye